Welcome to the 2017 Frankfurt Motor Show and coming up now, the stars of the show. We've had to come to the top level of the Mercedes stand here at Frankfurt just to get a view of that car down there because people have been swarmed around it all day and for good reason, because it's the Mercedes AMG Project One. Now it's a hypercar and quite often in this business you tend to find people like me say a car is a racing car for the road, but in this case I really do mean that because it's powered by not a normal engine but it's powered by the same engine that you'll find in Lewis Hamilton Formula One car. So that's a 1.6 litre twin turbocharged V6 hybrid. And this car pushes out over, well, nearly a thousand brake horsepower. A thousand brake horsepower. Now that's good enough for 217 mile an hour top speed and 0 to 124 miles an hour in around six seconds. Bearing in mind a Bugatti Chiron does that in six and a half seconds, gives a clue of how quick this thing is. Now it's a plug-in hybrid, so there's the engine and four electric motors. And if you run this car in full EV mode, you'll be able to travel for around 15 miles on pure electricity. What do you think to it? Well, in terms of styling, it doesn't really look like any other Mercedes. I think there's cues of the McLaren F1 in there, even a Noble, I think. It doesn't look like any other Mercedes road car at all. Now, prices should be around two and a half million pounds. That's just a concept. It should be arriving in around 2019, but I wouldn't expect it to look a huge amount different from that. This is the BMW X7 SUV concept. It's pretty big, isn't it? Especially that double kidney grille. Now, this car is supposed to be going up against the Range Rover. Now, BMW thinks it can topple that British SUV when this car arrives next year. What's the big news? Well, it's based on the 7 Series, as you'd expect. Inside, there's a big 12.3-inch touchscreen that allows people to share information between all the different passengers. We expect it to be a 7-seater. There's going to be a familiar range of petrols, diesels and plug-in hybrids available, and prices should kick off for around £70,000. What do you think to it? Well, the big elephant in the room is the way it looks, isn't it? Because personally, I would file this under the category where I've filed the Ford Scorpio, because I think this car is goppingly ugly. This is the brand new version of that Auto Express favourite, the Dacia Duster. And it arrives in Frankfurt with a brand new look. Now you'll see that it looks far more premium and aggressive than ever before. But underneath the new bodywork, it's pretty much identical. The dimensions are pretty much the same as the old car and the engine range is pretty much identical as well. There's the 1.2 petrol and the 1.5 diesel just tweaked for this new car. Inside is where the big changes lie though. The design is slightly different and there's a greater focus on soft touch plastics. There's a brand new infotainment system as well. Me personally, well I hope that they continue to offer a bargain basement entry level model in white with black plastic bumpers and steel wheels. Whether they will or not, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see how much Dacia charges the new Duster. I hope that they keep the prices in line with the old car because that was the old car's USP. Now, it should be arriving in the UK summer next year. Welcome to the Hyundai i30N, a car that Hyundai thinks is going to give the Volkswagen Golf GTI a damned good thrashing. So why do they think that then? Well, it's their hot hatch. It's the first of their N-brand performance models and it's been developed at the Nürburgring. Now onto the bonnet, there's a two-litre turbocharged four-cylinder engine in two power outputs. The standard car has 247 brake horsepower and the performance pack has 271 brake horsepower. Now the performance pack does 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.1 seconds and the standard car does it in 6.4. Inside, there's the usual familiar fare of sporty seats and lots of extra fancy bits of trim. Now, the performance pack adds a limited slip differential, larger brakes, larger wheels, and sticky Pirelli P0 tyres. But all cars get an N mode, a rev matching function, and launch control. Now, prices should start from around £28,000 when it goes on sale next year. Renault hot hatch fans rejoice because this is the launch of the new Renault Sport Megane. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, the standard Megane is already a daring looking car, but the Renault Sport moves things up a notch with flared bodywork, a large central exhaust and massive alloy wheels. Inside, there's swathes of aluminium trim and Alcantara seating fabric. 
Inside, it looks just as good as it does on the outside. But under the bonnet, that's what you want to know about, isn't it? Well, under there lies a 1.8 litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine pushing out 276 brake horsepower. By the end of 2018, there will also be a trophy version that gets an extra 20 brake horsepower and a cup chassis so it's a little bit stiffer and a limited slip differential. Now, the big news with this car is the fact it comes with four-wheel steering and unlike the Clio RS, this comes with a six-speed manual gearbox as standard. Thank the Lord. Now, there are various different driving modes to tweak and tailor the car to your bespoke requirements, but there's an awful lot of pressure in this car to be really very good because the previous Megane RSs have all been best in class for driving characteristics. It rides next year, and I really hope it's good. Now, whilst BMW have shocked people here at the Frankfurt Motor Show with its X7 SUV concept, things in this corner are a little bit more usual because this is the launch of the new BMW M5. Now, this is big news, obviously, the range-topping version of the 5 Series. Now, under the bonnet is the same engine as the old car. It's a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8, but this time it punches out 592 brake horsepower and 750 newton metres of torque, allowing this to get from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds, the same as the Mercedes-AMG E63S. Now, with this car, the big news is the fact it now has X-Drive, so there's four-wheel drive. Now, don't worry, you can put it into two-wheel drive mode if you're on the track, but for most of the time, the power is sent to the rear wheels, and if the rear wheels slip, power is sent to the front wheels. Whether this will ruin the driving experience, we'll have to wait and see. Now, it should be going on sale later this year, pricing around £92,000. What do you think to it? Well, I have to say the styling is a little bit undramatic in my taste. You wait for one Seat SUV and then three come along in quick succession. Last year it was the turn of the Ateca, next year it's the turn of the seven seat large SUV but now we've got the Arona, the smallest SUV that Seat plans to build for the time being. Now unsurprisingly it will rival the Nissan Duke. The Arona is slightly longer than the Duke and it uses the Seat Ibiza platform but there's a 15 millimeter ride height raise on this car. Now, just like the Ibiza, there's the familiar range of petrol engines. There's one litre three-cylinder turbos. There's two of those. And there's a 1.5 turbo petrol with cylinder deactivation as well. There's also two 1.6 diesels. The interior is slightly plain, just like it is on the Ibiza, but the outside is far more daring. There's a large colour palette and different roof combinations you can have as well. Prices should be kicking off from around £15,000 and it's going to be going on sale in October. This is the Mini all-electric concept. Now, it previews the all-electric Mini coming in 2019, and it's based on the Mini hatchback. Now, there are a few differences. The overhangs are slightly shorter. The waistline is slightly taller. Whether those will meet or reach production is anybody's guess. But one thing you can be sure of is the uncluttered surfaces and the yellow highlights, because the yellow highlights are a Mini electric design hallmark. Now, it's going to be using the same powertrain as the BMW i3, so you can expect a range of around 190 miles and DC charging capability. Now, it's been a long time coming as the Mini Electric. In 2009, there was the Mini E, but that was just a design prototype, really. This should be arriving in 2019. It'll be built in Cowley at Oxford with the powertrain coming over from Germany. MPVs are dead. Long live the SUV. Well, that's certainly the case here at Citroen because the Citroen C3 Picasso, remember that, has been replaced by this, the C3 Aircross. Now, it's based on the Vauxhall Crossland X, but you really wouldn't know it because look at it. It's a really funky looking thing, isn't it? Now, customization is a key part of the C3 Aircross. There are 85 different trim and specifications on offer. Inside, it's the usual Citroen fare that we've seen with the C3 Super Mini. So there's a focus on brightly coloured plastics and a focus on comfort as well. The Aircross is also the first Citroen to feature wireless phone charge and there's the usual Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Under the bonnet, you'll find the usual engines such as the 1.2 turbocharged petrol and the 1.6 diesel. Now, this car will go on sale on the 1st of November, priced from just under £14,000, rising to just under 20 
thousand pounds. And Motor Show wouldn't be complete without the launch of a brand new Ferrari, would it? This is the Portofino. It replaces the California T and is the new entry point into Ferrari's model range. And it's totally new, new body, far more aggressive styling, new chassis, new interior. The only thing that really is carried over from the old California T is the engine. It's a 3.9 litre twin turbo V8, but there's more power. There's now 592 brake horsepower. It's also 80 kilograms lighter than the old car. There's more interior space as well, and there's a larger boot. It's the first Ferrari for quite a while where Ferrari won't sell you bespoke luggage. If you want to put your own luggage in the car, you're gonna to have to put your own bags. And apparently I'm reliably informed there's enough room for two cabin sized bags. Inside it's totally new as well. There's two screens, one in the center and one for the passenger. Prices should be from around 165,000 pounds when it arrives in the UK in the spring. What do you think to it? Do you think it's prettier than the old California tea? Let us know in the comments section below.